Okay, now we will look at graphene, these guys. To understand even how to graph, let's revisit calc 1, calculus 1. When we had a function like f of x equals x squared, right? We typically used to say y equals f of x equals x squared. Why we used to say that? Um, to be able to see the relationship between x and f of x, we plot the input on the x and then we need an axis on which we plot the output. So we used to use this setup where we would have x here and y and we used to write y is the f of x. y is not some independent variable, rather it's the function of this guy. And then in this case it's x squared. So this point goes here, this point goes here, this point goes here, this point goes here, and so on, so on, this point goes here. So you get this parabola for this particular example, of course. And another thing to keep in mind was that if you just draw a random curve in 2D, we used to have this question, is this, could this be the function of x? We say yes, it can be, because for each x it has at most one output. But something like this cannot be the graph, it's graph of an equation or of some other relationship, but it's not the graph of a function, because for this input, you have two outputs, so which one is the output? A function only gives you one output per input. And so we used to call this the vertical line test. Sorry, vertical line test. Right? So we have the same idea here. We're going to generalize these ideas here. What are we going to do? Um, We have function like f of x y equals x squared plus y squared, right? So our input space itself is 2D, right? So we need to use up the x and y axis just for the input of this function. Then you need one more axis for the output. The output is a single value. So what we're going to do, we're going to use z axis for that. So this is what we're going to do. x and y is the input space. And then z on z axis we plot f of x y equals x squared y squared. Now what's what will be the so what will happen? What will happen is that for each point your input point, it gets raised by a certain height according to the value of that point. It gets raised by different heights, and what you're gonna get is in this particular example, the surface z equals x squared plus y squared. If you look up this back in chapter 11, 11.6 section on surfaces, this is what we call a paraboloid. In general, it's called an elliptical paraboloid because the cross sections are ellipses. In this particular case, because the coefficient of x and y is the same, the cross sections are uh, circles. Okay? So, um, yeah, so for each possible value here, like this point gets raised to this height, this point gets raised to this height, this point gets raised to this height, and so on and so forth, and you end up getting a surface. So one general thing to understand is that in, when you have y equals f of x, the graph is a curve. When you have z equals f of x, y, two inputs, one output, the graph will be a surface. Okay? Think of it. The original surface was the x, y plane. It gets lifted to different heights, and so uh, by according to the height function, your z function, and you get a surface out of it. Um, now, um, let's do let's do another example. Let's do another example. Um, example two. Um, f of x y equals square root of x squared plus y squared. And when you, if you were to plot this, it will get, it actually comes out to be the cone at 45 degrees with a circular cross section. Okay, and the cone goes up forever, obviously, uh, because you can make this bigger and bigger and bigger, and each point goes to appropriate height. Um, so, again, you'll notice that the graph is a surface. Now, that does not mean all surfaces our graphs of functions, right? So for example, if you had a sphere, right? 
Just like a circle in 2D is not graph of a function, a sphere is not graph of a function of two variables. Because for this input, you have two outputs, this point on the uh, upper hemisphere and this point on the lower hemisphere. So it violates the vertical line test. So you have the vertical line test here as well. Um, what we will do, um, we will look at a few more examples and then we will look at another method for understanding these graphs because drawing 3D graphs is, takes time, sometimes it's not easy to draw them, so we will uh, look at another tool for trying to understand graphs of 3D functions. Um, let's see how much time has been in the video, let me check that. Okay, so let's, let's pause this video, let's stop this video right now and I will look at a few more examples and show you 3D uh, visualizations of that in the next video.